And now, Pooja Atman, Sri Swami, Jyotirmayanan Ji, commences tonight's satsang with the Sanskrit peace chant. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamevavashishyate Om Shanti 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 We begin with mystic song by Sri Swami Lalitananda played and sung by Sri Swami Umananda and Rajneesh. Our song tonight is called The Spirit of love. <coughs> <coughs> We are recording from the ashram of our revered Guru, Pooja Atman Shri Swami Jyotir Mayananji in Miami, Florida. Today is December the 12th, 2018, Wednesday evening, and tonight Swamiji will be lecturing on the Yoga Vasishta. This is series 2018, class number 97. And now, Pooja Atman Shri Swami Jyotir Mayananji. Om Brahmanandam Param Sukhadam Kevalam Gyan Murtim Dvanvati Itam Gagan Sadrisham Tatvamasyadi Lakshyam Ekam Nityam Vimalamachalam Sarvadhi Sahakshi Bhutam Bhavati Itam Trigunarahitam Sadgurum Tamnamami Om Adoration to Sadguru who is Brahman, the giver of supreme bliss, embodiment of pure consciousness. 
one without a second, vast as the ether, infinite, eternal, beyond the three gunas and their modifications, the supreme preceptor. Yoga Vashishtha, we are entering into sthiti prakarana. Just to give you a general view of Yoga Vashishtha. Yoga Vashishtha is a voluminous work and it has six major chapters. Call them volumes, six volumes. <coughs> the first one deals with Vairagya, this passion, called Vairagya Prakarana. All these are known as Prakaranas. That's highlighting the quality of this passion. Second one is called Mubukshu Vyavahara Prakarana, highlighting the qualities where an aspirant must develop to attain God realization. It is in this section, the rather chapter, that you have been given the four gatekeepers. <coughs> Shabha, serenity, santosh, contentment, satsang, good association, and vichar, inquiry into who am I? The third chapter relates to utpatti prakarana, which we have concluded. Utpatti means birth of intuitive vision. You have been given all the angles to understand what intuitional vision does and its importance. Without intuitional vision, there is no liberation. Now, <laughs> that vision is to be rendered steady. So that's the purpose of this present chapter called Sthiti Prakarana. The next chapter that is coming after the fourth is called Up Upasham Prakarana. Upasham, absolute tranquility. Mind has in other words, we have accomplished the purpose of life. So sit on your couch and breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Not in ordinary oxygen. Breathe Satchidananda. Sital Mand Sugandh. Satyam Shivam Sundaram. And the last one deals with Nirvana Prakarana, glory of enlightenment. And the last one is, is the biggest volume. It is in two volumes. Purva Nirvana Prakarana, Uttar Nirvana Prakarana. So in, in brief, there there are seven volumes, seven chapters of Yoga Vashishta. And we are in the third chapter. Sthiti Prakarana. We give you some highlighted quotation from this chapter. Ye Mahamata Yahasanta Sura Shendriya Satrusu Janm Jwaravinashaya cha ushatya mahadhyaha. One may rule the worlds or may attain the position of Indra, the ruler of gods, 
or Varuna, the ruler of waters. But until the self is realized, he cannot experience supreme peace. It's a big message. <laughs> Sage Vashishtha continued, O Rama, as the knowledge of the self that is born by listening to Utpakti Prakarana, the, the chapter that I have, we have just concluded, the knowledge of self that has come into your mind, the vision of the intuitive knowledge, That vision is to be led to maturity through the present topic known as Stiti Prakarana, the topic of establishment of the intuitive vision. This world process is like a mysterious painting. First point, understand. <laughs> Painting can be very interesting. People travel a long distance to see a highly appreciated and costliest painting. <laughs> can be very interesting. But something surprising or rather shocking about the, the, the painting, nothing is real. You see wonderful faces, sea, ocean, mountains, sky, and all types of things, terror and love, all expressed through the paint. But touch it, nothing but the frame. The entire world experience is a kind of a painting. The way you experience your childhood, all those experiences, where are they? They vanished. Just like a painting. Sometimes paints wear off. That's old, old style of giving figurative description of illusion. Modern style, watch the cinema show. Enjoy it. Go on chewing popcorns. <laughs> <laughs> and experiencing sweet and bitter situations of the show. But behind all that, there are layers and layers of illusions. One layer of illusion, you see the dragons or Draculas coming with blood dripping from their teeth. And if you have been in the, in the film industry, you sit back and smile. They didn't do so well. They should have taken some red tomatoes. <laughs> they would have created a better blood flow. <laughs> so, it's one angle. Another angle, you don't say, how terrible. <laughs> if the demon comes to me, what will happen to me? Stop shaking. Right on the Every pore within your body shakes. And say to yourself, it's worth watching this. <laughs> Money has not been wasted.
And <laughs> all that I'm leading to understand that behind all that, there's nothing but the screen. And all the actings are actors. <laughs> they may be giving you big teachings about Vairagya, but they're going to be paid for it. But this mysterious painting of the world process exists without any basis. Another shocking news here with the cinema show, there is at least a screen. In a painting, there is a canvas. But here, there is nothing. Even that canvas is illusion. To understand that point, just to give you simple simile. <laughs> All illuminations of the sun, <laughs> they, uh, they are like paintings in the canvas of your sky. Now, first understand the illusion of the paintings, but then turn your attention to the sky. The canvas of the sky itself is not real. Figure that out. It's nothing but space, indescribable. But according to human limited vision, you look and you see the sky mingling with the earth, shaking hands. horizons, and the sky towering over you, blue. All that is not a reality. It's coming from your own illusion. And on that sky, you have all other illusions. So it's not simple illusion to put your finger on, but illusion within illusion within illusion. During the winter season, monkeys sit around gunja fruits, which being fire red, give rise to the illusion of fire. Go into a forest. <laughs> it is all cold and chilly. But monkeys are hugging together scratching each other, and they are in the bunches of blossoms that are so red that the monkeys feel that this is sun rising. <laughs> and they have a joy joyous time. <laughs> That's the description <laughs> of all human happiness. Think of all things that make you happy. And all those things are like gunja flowers. They don't give any warmth. But your mind creates an illusion that you're receiving happiness through the objects of the world. You're receiving happiness through the pleasures of the senses. You're receiving happiness through money, through progeny, through your power and fame. All these are gunja fruits because they are nothing substantial in them. 
But then, monkey is completely relaxed about it. <laughs> so, Kemolo, Kemolo yes. <laughs> how, how beautiful it is. <laughs> Spanish way of <laughs> monkey and a bottle. <laughs> Anonymous. <laughs> Synonymous. Putreshana, Vitteshana, Lokeshana. <laughs> Three types of joy every soul goes after. Instead of discovering the immortality of the soul, <laughs> mind plays a foxy role. <laughs> mind says, all right, you are not going to be living all the time. But your sons will live, and their sons will live, and that will keep you immortal in the world. <laughs> so, the urge to realize immortality is led by the illusion, if you can, Live your life in such a way that you inherit, let your children inherit your good qualities and then let their children, and if you can imagine how your whole line has been wonderful, really relaxed. It's a monkey business. The next type of illusion, if you could become very rich, the mind follows a very simple mantra. All troubles come because you don't have money. <laughs> so have, secure your money. Foremost thing in your life. With patience. Like money is implying all types of possessions, ownership of so many things. And then another type, location. Same mind that follows different forms of illusion. There are my people who have who are already rich, etc. But not finding any fulfillment. They want to be famous. No one is like, like me. I'm just talking a little. <laughs> Go <ahead. laughs> No one ever was, no one ever will be. And the fact is, it applies to everybody. <laughs> but you don't have to be considered about it. No one is, can be exactly like you. No one was ever in the past exactly like you. And no one will ever be exactly like you. It's a simple fact you have to figure out in your mind. So therefore, you have every right to say, I am <laughs> no one like me. But who say it with understanding, it will not inflate your ego. It's a simple fact. It applies to everyone. As salacious as a mirage, 
finding happiness, stability, fulfillment of all your desires. If your concept is that you are going to find all this in this world by maintaining your personality, the same skeleton, the same brain, the same spinal cord. <laughs> if you have that type, it's completely dull with. So, all human concept of securing, enjoying, is just like a mirage. And the dear, dear, <laughs> looking at mirage, he comes so happy, runs after drinking water. And in that process, of course, you can imagine, they simply die. As fallacious as a mirage, as empty as castles in the air, <laughs> that's <laughs> subtle art everyone knows. We're born with that art. Such an art that you create castles <laughs> in the air. <laughs> and if you are not doing anything substantial, then the mind goes, goes into that castle and <laughs> sits on the couch. Enjoy the story of castles. <laughs> Illusory like the city is in the clouds. <laughs> if the castle in the air didn't give you complete idea. <laughs> See how children, how we grown ups look at the clouds and how this creates so many fascinating feelings in human mind. The children actually begin to imagine they are divine cities floating in the air. And exactly the same situation. All the things that you are experiencing in the world, they are just clouds. For easier understanding, think of your dream. All that you see in your dream, they are not even clouds. <laughs> they are not even in real space. <laughs> they are absolute illusion. This world process has no reality of its own. In the cinema show, every picture that is projected, every picture is just an illusion, it's not a reality. What gives reality to all is the screen. Similarly, Brahman is the reality, alone is the reality. Brahman, absolute consciousness. Just like behind all illuminations, sun is the reality. Now, in order to realize that reality, <coughs> you have to remove illusion. And that again is not an easy thing. Like a plant and a stem, this world consists of layers of illusion. In modern times, 
bananas are useless something very faulty <laughs> don't go bananas go away go, 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 go after apples <laughs> it has a source in ancient literature <laughs> the whole world process is described as but not out stem <laughs> stem a plantain tree why <laughs> the stem seems so good farmers made a research about the stems they brought big stems to use it for cooking etc with thinking that it will hold something internal something like coconut <laughs> something substantial and the children watch and the parent spills one peel gone another peel gone another peel gone all gone <laughs> nothing in it and with each peeling there is so much fascinating watch so also is your life you have peeled off your childhood days peel off your teenage days you go on peeling and peeling and when you have trouble you appeal <laughs> give me more substance to pee it is the water of illusion <coughs> that contains the that continues to sustain this world process but the process of enquiry is much like the fierce rays of the sun that dry up these illusory waters this involvement in illusion layers and layers of illusion what is the cure cure is what is called vichar allowing firstly to develop the art of pure understanding reasoning that is purposeful figuring out what is the goal of your life that type of reasoning not reasoning to collect all types of knowledge about the world that that type is good in your practical world but that also will not good if you allow your mind to gather so many details say for example you are planning to visit some place then you are plan there start your mind starts which hotel should i choose now you going to google google tells you there are so many places you can inquire into <laughs> there are hundred of them <laughs> each one offers you so many details now you have to book collected a volume of information <laughs> i'm just that joke but not joking at the same time <laughs> that's how human mind operates the more knowledge before you greater is the possibility of your mental distraction so just gathering knowledge is not looks like it makes you very bright 
but that's not really so. But the type of knowledge, that's one point, and its focus is on discovering who am I, focused on a process leading you to bhakti and mukti, devotion and liberation. That intellect is to be promoted. When that intellect starts and it, it turns into intuitive intellect, the operation of intellect in the beginning is like a caterpillar process. But as you, integration takes place in your personality, then it becomes like a butterfly. That again is allegorical. I would rather prefer a better illustration. And that's intellect in the beginning like a crow. <laughs> when transformed becomes a swan. This world process is an expansion of misty illusion. It's called mysticism. <laughs> and go into the world of mysticism. So many philosophical views about the world. The world, the Sankhya philosophers have imagined it to be inert. Inert means it describes Purusha and Prakriti, two aspected reality behind the world. All Prakriti mod modifications are, un are insensitive, rather they are inert. Nothing of the objects have the capacity to know or be aware of. And Purusha Brahman is a source of consciousness. So you view the world as a mixture of consciousness and inert matter. Inner matter sourced by Prakriti. Consciousness sourced by Brahman, Purusha. Purusha and Prakriti. Sankhya philosophy is the earlier stage. Again, it's actually more mature way to understand. Different philosophical systems are to match match up with different levels of evolution of a spiritual aspirant. Human mind suddenly told all this is illusion, you cannot grasp it. The mind starts asking, but where does the illusion dwell? And if someone were told it dwells beyond the Milky Way, so, oh, Rava, I know it. <laughs> it's a kindergarten type of uh, understanding. But that understanding helps a student in his early stage. The sages gave the teachings according to the level of spiritual aspirants. But those journalists who took the teachings, I'm thinking in, um, <laughs> humorously, <laughs> they gave to the world the idea that this was the only philosophy. And 
and there is always a kind of battle. Some saying Sankhya is the best, some saying Vedanta is the best. And some saying Sankhya evolved into Vedanta. <laughs> that, that is another level, way of thinking. But whatever helps you in your evolution, that's good for you. <laughs> but the final and absolute reality cannot be challenged. In other words, same Sankhya philosophy that said Purusha and Prakriti. Vedanta said yes. But Prakriti is the magical power of Brahman. So therefore, as long as you are deluded, there is Purusha, Brahman, and there is a source of insentient matter. But when you become enlightened, when you are not deluded by magic, then you look at the magician, and the magician is just alone. All his magical show, was just a projection of illusion. <coughs> Even with Advaita, non-duality, the different views, the view of Shankaracharya, the ultimate view, the Shuddha Advaita, absolute non-duality. To help aspirants who have not come to that level, called Vishishta Advaita. Vishishta Advaita, that God exists in both ways. He is absolute, at the same time, he is also creating the whole world. We shouldn't be confused. These are different stages of understanding. The ultimate understanding, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya, Brahman alone is real. Just like we are looking at all the dreams. But ultimate awakening, nothing of the dream ever existed. Sri Rama asked, O oh sage, if this world doesn't exist in reality, then why have the sages maintained that it exists in seed form during the time of universal dissolution, Mahapralaya? Again, that's for those who are not on the advanced state of aspiration, sages have described creation and dissolution they alternate in this world. Evolution and involution. Presently, according to science, evolution is moving on. There will come a time when involution will start. And then all things go back to the very source from where they have started. In the mystical way of describing it, she was bang. Science describes it, big bang, but thinks of only one bang. Bang has not finished its story. The she was bang goes on banging every moment. So looking at the same from different angles.
if the world exists as a seed and then is projected as a tree as a tree then how can it be considered unreal if rama presents the question rama himself does not need this question but this kind of opening up for the masses shri vashishtha said o rama this view is maintained to help the ignorant when one is able to grasp the fact that the world does not exist the question of its seed does not arise how can an illusory tree arise out of out of an illusory seed give you very simple way to understand <laughs> when you pass the night with mental distraction <laughs> and you have heard about the stories of nishacharas the demons that wander through the night and open through the window and see so many shadows there are countless things in this world the whole world of demons and when the sun rises people have their own imagination that all these demons hide somewhere what i'm leading you to understand that darkness has no existence sun seems to create day and night and you may ask the question therefore the sun must have the seed for the night and seed for the day <laughs> but the sun has nothing but the day there is no night in night was that created by the sun but from earthly state you consider the sun as the cause of your day and night in other words darkness doesn't exist light exists truth alone exists not falsehood But this does not resolve the problem until you start doing your sadhana and integrate yourself, because this statement is in the level of palabras. <laughs> Words you are hearing, what you have heard, it must open up a channel for which are inquiry. if it does not open up the channel if simply stored in your mind like an information then it becomes palabra it doesn't have any basis it may still it will not be completely useless one day when you begin to develop this passion towards the illusions of the world you will remember those palabra in the second section shivashita continued o rama even if you consider this world to exist as a seed in the absolute self during mahapralaya or during universal dissolution there must exist another element that could awaken the seed from its dormant state and lead it to its germination and growth 
what he's pointing out to Rama, that if you view that there is the world process is a seed, then you are accepting dualistic view that behind this universe there is duality. God and, and, and something, a source for matter. But the reality is Brahman alone exists. How can there exist another other than Brahman? And that other than Brahman, where will it come from? By exercising reason, it is easy to understand that Brahman, the self, the supreme cause, has itself manifested into, the, into this world process. From the point of view of the truth, the world process has never been created. All the, put it in a very simple way to understand, things that you see, you consider them real. Ask yourself, become more detached and kind of a detached ob observer. How do you see? Through your eyes. And your eyes are not the perfect instruments. Therefore, you use up specs and enlarging specs telescopes. <laughs> Your eyes are not exactly giving you the truth. And no matter how, how many instruments you use to aid the mind, they are not the ultimate revealer. This is a very simple point. Therefore, the fact is you are not seeing the reality. Though your eyes are seeing it. Same applies with your touch. Same applies with your taste. Things that you enjoy so well. There are other animals and creatures that don't like it. <laughs> and there are creatures that enjoy thorns. They become like delicate salad in their mouth. <laughs> Human beings don't enjoy that. I'm joking. <laughs> so, the operation of senses on the basis of the senseless senses, <laughs> the world you experience is a dull sense. This is a broad truth. So how much should you allow yourself to be sunk into this nonsense? <laughs> so begin to spur up and be focused on getting out of this all nonsense. The source behind all your senses, mind and intellect. What is that source? And that source is your reality. You, you are the source. And that you is not your ego. And that doesn't require much difficult philosophy to understand. When you sleep, your ego moves away from you, just like you put your slippers away and then you go to sleep. You leap into sleep. And ego itself has to be taken away like a slipper. So ego based, all your experiences, they are not, they are not you. They are not defining you. They are not in 
in any way limiting you. Neither they are enhancing you nor they are diminishing you. You are ever the same. That you is not to be confused with your ego. Ego is your shoes. Shoes are not you. From the point of view of the truth, the world process has never been created. It's only the ignorance-ridden mind that has sustained the illusion of the world process. O Rama, this world has never existed, doesn't exist even now, and will never exist in the future. In fact, is the time itself is non-existent. Pure consciousness alone is, and it is on this truth that the sacred Upanishads have declared, all this is Brahman, Brahme Vedam Sarvam, all that you are experiencing in your dream is your own consciousness. All you are experiencing in your life is absolute consciousness. Chaitanya, Chit. When ignorance and its effects in the form of desires, subtle cravings, and karmic impressions are destroyed, this world is absolutely annihilated. Remember the three terms, manonash, vasana, kshaya, tattva, jnan. When you begin to integrate your personality and begin to discover that you are not really living a life of fulfillment and joy, if your mind is constantly moving this way and that way, if you are living in a world based on events, breaking of the news, you are more hearing the breakage, <laughs> less the news. <laughs> but when you move away from the breaking aspect, with serenity, we are going after the real news, the discovery of who you are. So manonash, as manonash advances, your vasanas, the subtle impressions, undergo a transfiguration. You do not hold impressions of things that are illusory, the things that are meaningful, your mind holds. The serenity based impressions, those impressions now are totally of a different nature. With a serene mind, the world pours God's glory into your mind. Amazing glory. You don't have to go far and wide. You simply ask a little frog to open its mouth. Or see the glory of God. <laughs> Expressing to its tender mouth. <laughs> the world is filled with divine glory. With serenity, you are capturing the glory of God without going here and there, etc. And as vasanas become purified, called vasana kshaya, all the impure vasanas come to dissolve. Then comes tattva jnana. 
like clouds have moved away and the sun shines. In, when the sun shines, you don't go on talking about where did the darkness go? Did you see how they were running? <laughs> there is absolute resolution to all problems. That's truth. Brahman, aham brahmasmi. So with this I will conclude. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Puname Vavashishyate Om Shanti Shanti Shanti